Hello Watch fans, this is Anders here on Watch On channel. So the tradition every Christmas time every December is a follow up video about the state of my collection. I do one every summer, then one every December to have kind of six months between. And very much has happened to my collection, so I want to walk you through my whole collection today. What I sold, what I bought and what my future plans are for my collection. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. It's a very big help. I'm very close to 25,000 subscribers. So thank you so much for watching my videos, subscribing, commenting and liking my videos. I do have some worthy mentions just before we get into the full collection overview here. So I have my Seiko SKX, I have my Seiko Solar Chronograph and I have my old Citizen Promaster Solar EcoDrive. I don't really consider them part of the collection anymore. I haven't sold them, they're still in my collection, but they are not part of my main collection and that's why I'm not including them in this overview. I have 19 watches I want to present you with. So let's just start from one end and that is one of my newest purchases. This is my Unimatic. This is the Unimatic U1S-MP. They do a lot of field style watches and these kind of sterile, very tough dive watches. I opted for this one because they use the Salita SW200 movement inside of this watch. A lot of the watches they use the Seiko NH35A and I think at the price point it's simply too expensive for a Seiko movement. But with this one they use the Salita movement and I'm very happy with this watch. I did a full review of this 41mm sized watch. It's quite heavy, it's quite big. I got it on another strap than the supplied NATO or supplied rubber strap. I think the leather look here just really looks cool, warm during these winter days. So the Unimatic here, a watch I really enjoy and a watch that I can definitely recommend. You can see the full review and the full review of all other watches here in this collection overview if you look through the archives of my channel. So the next one is also a dive watch, a vintage inspired dive watch and a watch that I bought this year. This is the Yema Superman Heritage 500. This is the new revamped very much upgraded Yema dive watch. This is the 39 millimeter version. You can see no date version. You can also get a 41 millimeter version. You can get it on a bracelet, on a leather strap. I got it on the bracelet, but I opted to buy this Marine National Yema kind of parachute military strap and it wears amazing on this strap. I did own three other Yemas that I sold. This is my only Yema now and for me, one Yema in the collection is perfect and this particular Yema here is really, really doing a great job. This is the mysterious blue because you see in this strong studio light, you get the blue color. You can also get it in a black, but in most other lighting situations, this watch actually is much more dark, almost black in its color. Really nice watch, upgraded movement, upgraded bezel action, upgraded loom, upgraded case finish and upgraded crown action. Actually with the crown unscrewed on this watch, you still get 30 meters of water resistance. And it is normally 500 meters of water resistance with this French brand here. And the third watch I also bought this year, this is the Titoni Impetus. This is, in my opinion, the very best luxury Swiss integrated bracelet sport style dress style watch you can find at less than two or three thousand dollars. This is around 1500 US dollars and you get a sweet deal in my opinion. You see the Clou de Paris dial here. These beautiful hour markings which are high polish. Really nice handset, really nice polishing to the bezel here. Also to the case, the chamfering, the edge here going all the way through the case. And also in between all the links of this integrated stainless steel bracelet. It is powered by the ETA 28. 92 movement which is high grade they do regulate them and i get amazing accuracy on this watch very thin you see as well again this watch you can also see the full review here on my channel also a nice touch is the titoni gold rotor this is 18 karat gold i believe it's gold plated but still a really really nice feature sapphire crystal on both sides really beautiful watch very different and a very nice brand that has existed for more than 100 years. And what is interesting about Titoni is actually the fact that it's still independent and family owned. So you can also find 
dress style watches and dive watches within the collection. I can definitely recommend this brand. Amazing watch. So that was three new watches this year. You may remember I did use to own the Longchin Hydro Conquest and the Longchin Spirit. I sold both. The Hydro Conquest was a really great watch. I think that the bracelet and the clasp could need some upgrades, also the finishing of the case. But overall, it was a high performance, beautiful 300 meter dive watch. But I got a lot of dive watches in my collection, so I had to go. The Spirit, I got a little bit tired of the long locks, but overall that was an amazing watch. And now they released this watch, the Spirit collection in 37 millimeters, so maybe that could be an option. This is my latest purchase. This is the brand new 2022 Longchin Master Collection. So the Master Collection is kind of blending modern and classic from this historic amazing swiss brand this is the green version 40 millimeters with the roman numerals you can get a 42 millimeter size as well you can get it without roman numerals in different colorways with numbers instead a lot of different versions i really enjoy this watch i think it's a fun everyday watch beautiful really high performing amazing longin 888 movement so at around 2000 2200 us dollars i think this is a real bargain this could be your everyday dress style watch or your only watch in the collection almost. It's only 30 meters water resistant, which is a kind of a bummer to me. But what I also enjoy is that you have very short locks. Longchin, they really like these very long locks. They only have short locks and this and the alligator strap here with the double deploying push here. It's a really nice strap. It really just conforms to your wrist after a week or two. So these was four of the new purchases I have added to my collection. So now let's get into some of the mainstays in my collection. The Cimier Royal Skeleton. I did review this one as well. This is a 43 mm Swiss made skeletonized watch. You can see my hand on the other side here. I really just enjoy the fact having a skeleton watch in my collection. Although I don't wear this watch very often. I really enjoy it when I wear it for a day or two because it's just so different and you get the whole skeletonized movement here. They remove all the additional parts you don't really need and then they make it skeletonized so you can see through everything. Really nice polishing, really nice deployment buckle here, really nice blue leather strap. Simier, a revamped Swiss brand you should definitely look out for because they make some really cool watches in the luxury segment. And then the beautiful Citizen I purchased also this year. Amazing watch. These are around $500. I've also seen them at around $450. And for that money, it's an amazing watch. You just look at the finishing. Look at the dial. It's very, very high quality at that price point. And then you turn over the watch and you see the 9011 movement, which is in fact the 9015 movement, but the 9011 movement is what Citizen uses for their own in-house productions. So this is a completely in-house produced watch. They produce everything themselves. Just see the finishing. Just remember this is $500 or less. Really, really beautiful finishing. I really like the skeletonized rotor here. It's very accurate. You get 100 meters of water resistance and a perfect everyday and even dress style watch if you don't want to spend too much money. So around 500 US dollars, you get a perfect watch. I did remove the bracelet. I think it looks much better on this strap here. Here you see some information about the strap. Really high quality. And I really like this kind of cafe latte brown towards the blue dial. So definitely a high quality watch. I really enjoy. I don't wear it that much, but... I, again, just like with the Titone, really enjoy finding these super nice offers where you get a lot of more watch for the money than you actually pay. So, my Oris and my only Oris in the collection, I did use to own two other Orises. Those were the Oris Diver 65. This is the Oris Aquis Caliber 400, the 41.5 millimeter version in green. This is one of two very modern ceramic dive watches I have in my collection and it is together with the Longchin here, my only other green watch. You see, the AR treatment could be better, but it's a very shiny, very high quality watch. The bracelet is top quality, great clasp. The movement has 120 hours of power reserve and a 10 year 
service interval. Really nice crown action, great bezel action, and I just really like this fresh green color. I actually thought at first that this green color would probably only be kind of acceptable during the summer or spring, but during the winter and the colder months, it's really nice to wear as well. So this is definitely the orange that I'm going to have in my collection, which is going to stay in my collection. So moving on to two watches that has been in my collection for a long time. This is my Tag Heuer Aqua Racer. I bought this maybe seven or eight years ago in Las Vegas. It has been with me on a lot of holidays, swimming, diving, going hiking, going into the desert, and it just keeps great time, great loom, still looks great. And it is a very distinct Tag Heuer Aqua Racer design, this kind of UFO style design. Really like the kind of plank dial here. And then I got it on the rubber strap, top quality rubber strap, one of the best rubber straps I have ever tried. So this is definitely stay in my collection because I have a lot of history with this watch and it's just a tough, durable dive watch. And then to another legendary watch and definitely a watch that is of course much more legendary than the Aqua Racer, this is the Tag Heuer Monaco. This is the one with the sunburst dial you can see. Really amazing watch. Wears much better on the wrist than you would think. 39 millimeters in diameter, a little bit thick, and of course square, but it wears amazing. This is probably the most iconic watch that Takoya has e ever done, and in my opinion, one of the most iconic sports chronograph watches ever done. The design, the look, the case shape, and also the fact that it was worn by Steve McQueen in the Le Mans movie from 1971, I think, and also actually worn by Walter White in Breaking Bad. This just makes the watch even more desirable. You can get a lot of different versions. You can get one with a more kind of a light pale non-sunburst blue that is a little more kind of original compared to this one, but I really like this more sporty sunburst effect dial here. So a really nice watch, still going great and a mainstay in my collection. So the Grand Seiko's. This is also a watch that has been in my collection for a long time. This is the Grand Seiko Snowflake. Probably the most iconic and legendary watch that Grand Seiko has ever made because of the dial, this beautiful snow, kind of snowflake dial you can see. It is inspired by the snow on the mountains, which the Japanese Seiko workers can see from the offices in Tokyo. This is the spring drive movement, so it's also very interesting to have this watch with this very amazing movement, very accurate. You see super high beat, no stuttering whatsoever. Also, it's made in titanium, so it's very light. And here you see the spring drive movement. This is definitely, if you want one sporty style Grand Seiko watch, the Snowflake is probably the most iconic you can get. And then I actually this year also bought another Grand Seiko. And this is probably one of the best entry level or even maybe luxury simple manual wound dress watches you can find this is top quality this watch punches so much above its weight every little detail with this watch this is the sbgv 231 is just amazing it's only 37.3 millimeters so i was a little bit anxious if it was going to wear a bit too small on my wrist but it wears amazingly and this is with the Saratsu finish, just like with the Snowflake. But here you have the polishing all over the case and it looks amazing. This is stainless steel. And here you see the manually wound Grand Seiko movement. Amazing movement. Really beautifully finished. The original crocodile letter strap from Grand Seiko. And the original buckle as well. I can definitely recommend this if you want a vintage style but modern dress style watch. Very simple, time only, no date. Also only just the Grand Seiko applied GS logo and then Grand Seiko printed to the dial. And then this beautiful Saracho finishing. The cream color dial is what actually just won me over. And now you can get this watch in different color figurations as well if you don't like this cream color dial. But this is my most classic dress style watch in my collection. Moving into the Omegas. This is one of the oldest watches in my collection. This is the Omega Seamaster 2531-80. 
This is the Pierce Brosnan James Bond version. And this was a very popular watch in the 90s. It has really gotten a revival these years. These are really sought after. Especially because good examples without too many scratches, they are becoming more scarce. This wears amazingly. They did make a professional dive watch with 300 meters of water resistance that just wears so slim on the wrist. This is something that a lot of watch brands today could learn something from, because today all of these professional dive watches, they are meant to wear a little more bulky. This wears just like a dress watch almost, so it's the perfect everyday watch. Really enjoy this watch, love this watch, love the bracelet and the clasp, top quality. A watch that I will never leave my collection, because it has a lot of history with me, and also because it is a legendary watch in the Omega collection. So staying with the Seamasters, this is the 2018 revamped version of this one. I decided to get it in the chrome grey dial with the blue bezel. And this together with the Oris Aquis is my other very modern and bigger professional dive watch. Amazing watch. This is my go-to watch every summer. I wear this watch a lot during the summer because of the rubber strap, because of the coloring and because it's just a very tough and accurate watch. So inside we find the coaxial movement here. Amazing movement. This is approximately one second plus per day. I bought it approximately two and a half, three years ago, and I'm still very happy with this watch. During the winter time, I must say I don't wear it a lot because it's simply for me just a watch that kind of reminds me of summer and spring. So during the winter time and fall time, it actually just lays around in the bank box but I enjoy this watch a lot and a really worthy upgrade to the original high-tech watch probably the most high-tech watch in my entire collection so definitely an amazing watch as well and the third and the last Omega in my collection of course the Omega Speedmaster Professional this is the out of production version the professional version they don't do anymore this is the Hesalite crystal manually wound no see-through case back I decided to never really get caught into the Omega Speedmaster rabbit hole because the Omega Speedmaster rabbit hole will leave you dried out of funds. There are so many cool Speedmasters, so I decided to get the ultimate one in my opinion, the 42mm Omega Speedmaster Professional with the plexiglass and the manual wound movement. And I'm so happy with this watch. This watch is a strap monster. You can put any strap on this watch and it looks amazing. I wear it on the original bracelet here, which is very comfortable, no micro adjust, so that's a little bit of a, a bummer, but I managed to find the perfect fit, but put it on a black or a coffee brown leather strap, it wears amazingly as well. So before we move into Tudor and Rolex, the last part of my collection, my only high horology piece in my collection, this is the Piaget Polo S. This is, in my opinion, together with some of the Chesele Coulter models, the best option, the best way into high horology. The Polo S is an amazing stainless steel sports watch, 100 meters of water resistance, amazing movement, very slim, beautiful finishing, beautiful dial. Everything just screams high horology, high quality with this watch. I have been wearing this watch a lot during this winter and I just really fell back in love with this watch. Such a great everyday but still sports style watch. Of course it has its inspiration from the Gerald Jensa 70s. Piaget they did their own polo sport I believe it was in 1979 I believe or 1976. So they were just around the same time as Gerald Jensa did the iconic Patek Philippe and Audemars Piquet designs. This kind of reminds me mostly of the Patek Philippe Aquanaut design. Amazing watch. Definitely look into this watch. Find it pre-owned. Pre-owned there are around 8,000 US dollars. And this is an amazing entry into something very special. And then the last four watches before I tell you about what went. And also tell you a little about what I expect to look into in the next year. So, of course... The Tudor Black Bay 58, I got it on this amazing rubber B strap. I never really got comfortable with the leather strap. It looks amazing on different straps. This is a strap monster just like the Speedmaster. 
I didn't get it on the bracelet, which I kind of regret today, but when I bought it, it was very hard to get these watches. So if you could get one, just buy it. This is probably one of the very best luxury dive watches made in many, many years. And it's a watch that I'm always kind of battling with because it's amazing. It's perfect. 39 millimeters, great movement, plus one or two seconds per day, great loom, great bezel action. Everything just works with this watch. But it's almost as it's as if it's too perfect. It's simply too good. And for some reason, I find it a little bit boring at times because it's simply just too well made of a watch. But it will not leave my collection unless another Tudor comes into my collection. So if this goes, maybe the Pelagos 39 could be a choice. But I really enjoy this watch. Everything is perfect with this watch. It wears amazingly. And it's definitely a modern dive watch icon. Probably the best entry level or luxury Swiss dive watch you can find. So the last three watches are my Rolexes. And first we have my Datejust here. This is the black dial with the plain bezel. I opted for the most anonymous, so I didn't even want the blue dial because for me this was meant to be an everyday watch. I didn't want something that was too loud, too screaming, too bold. And this is just a perfect, maybe the most perfect combination of sports, dress and everyday watch ever made. So these are just so accurate. They wear so nicely. I would wish that they maybe just took one millimeter off because it's the Rolex Date just 41. I have nothing bad to say about this watch except that it is a smudge magnet. It's absolutely horrible with all the smudges and little hairline scratches. You see I do get a little bit of hairline scratches here. But I wear my watches. I'm not babying my watches. I buy them to wear. Everything else is kind of ridiculous in my opinion. Invest in stock or something else if you want to invest. Buy watches to wear them and enjoy them. So, my Submariner in my collection, I think, of course, if you're a real watch nerd. And of course, if you have the money and you prioritize, and you prioritize your collection, then you should, of course, have a Submariner as well as a Seamaster in collection. And I opted to get this 16613 from 2004. I have everything, box and paper, full set. Really good condition, but just like with the Datejust, the polished surfaces, they do get scratches, smudges, because I wear my watches. This is a really cool combination of having a professional dive watch, having a Submariner design, Submariner in your collection, but also having some gold. And the two-tone just kind of crosses out two boxes for me. I have a Submariner. I wear this watch quite a lot, watch in my collection with some gold in it. So it definitely crosses two boxes in my collection. Really nice watch, great bezel action, wears amazingly on the wrist. Maybe one of the most wearable professional dive watches ever made. The 40 millimeter case is just so well designed, wears amazing on the wrist. And then the last watch of my collection, and the first Rolex I ever bought. This is my Rolex DMT Master 16700. I love this watch. I don't wear it that much anymore. For me, somehow, because I bought it during the summertime, this is a summer watch for me. Just early summer, spring, I bought this watch many years ago. I paid 5,000 US dollars, so yeah, that was back then. Now it's kind of maybe triple the value or something like that. You see the great patina. And it just is a joy to wear and it's an icon with the Pepsi bezel. This is, has been serviced once and it's running one second plus per day. It's so great with these old Rolex movements. They're so accurate. They're so tough. And I just really love this watch. This is probably the last watch I would ever sell along with the Seamaster here because these two, they have a lot of history with me. Just like the Takoya Aquaracer. You saw before the white one placed here. So those three I would probably never part with. I really love this watch. This is amazing. And this is from when Rolex, they did these very slim cases. They wear like a dream. Perfect size for so many wrist sizes. Let's just talk very shortly about what went out. So the Satina DS Action Diver Ceramic. Great watch. I wore a lot this summer on paternity leave. But I decided to sell it because it mostly was bought as a summer watch, just to enjoy, just to fool around with, and then used 
for reviews and comparisons here on my channel. It went, it's a really great watch, but now it's sold. It was the same with the Mido Ocean Star Gradient Red. Then I also sold the Seiko Sports 5 GMT Batman, that was the same history just like the Mido and the Satina. I bought them to enjoy them for a short time, feature them here on my channel and then sell them on. Then I also sold my Seiko Prospects SPB 143, my Doxa Sub 600, my Norcane Adventure Sport and my Norcane Freedom 60. And to conclude this video, let me just talk about some of the watches I'm looking into. So I have been for several years looking very much into adding a CSL Kultur, a JLC to my collection, but it won't be the Polaris or a Master, it will probably be a Moonface calendar watch. You can find these beautiful 39 to 40 millimeter watches at around 6, 7, 8 thousand US dollars in good condition. Also the Zenith El Primero, but it could be another Zenith, I think they have a very interesting, very sporty collection these days. Then of course a Breitling Navitimer and this is because it's an iconic watch and I have this old dream of collecting the 5 most iconic chronograph watches which is the Speedmaster, the Monaco, the Navitimer, the El Primero and the Daytona. So this was my collection run through and also my future plans, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, share it on the forums on Facebook and places like that. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook and leave a comment down below. What is your favorite in my collection and what do you think I should add to my collection to make it even better and stronger and funnier. Thank you so much for watching, have a great 2023, I'll see you very soon again, thank you, bye.